Hi guys! So I've just bought this. It's a smart plug from AIIAT. Or should that be AIIT? 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 I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> it's a smart plug. Anyway, I bought it to control my 3D printer. I've got a Raspberry Pi running up to print and that gets its power from my Ender-3's power supply. And I've chosen to do it this way because I don't want the Octoprint instance running all the time. I only want it on when I'm running the printer. So if I can control both the printer and the Octoprint server using this, I'll be happy. It uses the Smart Life app. So I know that it's really a two-year plug. So I'm going to try and do an over-the-air two-year convert to flash Tasmota, play with the settings in Tasmota to find out what the pins do, and then I'm going to build my own custom firmware using ESP Home to give me direct integration with Home Assistant. So first, let's see what's in this box. Okay, here it is. An AI at smart socket. We've got a CE mark and an ROHS certificate. So it integrates with Google Home and Amazon Echo. Sorry, almost said her name. Um, we've got a QR code on the back. And that's about it. Okay. So let's open it up and take a look. Inside we've just got the plug. There it is. Fairly neat. Here's the plugs, proper protected pins and a little LED at the bottom. There's this push button there on that side. Apart from that it looks fairly standard. On the bottom here it says 90 to 240 volts with a max current of 10 amps and a Wi-Fi runs on the frequency of 2.4 gigahertz and we've got a model number and a CE mark and I'll have it there. What else is in the box? There's an instruction book in there if I can get it out. Yeah, it's one of these great long dangly things. That's telling us how to set it up for the two-year app, or Smart Life as it recommends, but we're not going to do any of that, so we can get rid of that. And that seems to be it. Nothing else there. All of that can go, so that's all we want. Okay. Okay, the next thing to do is to flash Tasmota onto this device using to your convert to flash over the air. So there's no need to pull it apart or do any soldering. Now I'm not gonna go over that here because DigiBlur has already done a great video which should walk you through the process. So go and check out his video for that. Now, I've already done this. So now that Tasmota's on the device, I've been able to find out what pins do what simply by trial and error. Now, I'm going to set up my ESP home sketch that I'm going to run on this device. Okay, so we've got the plug running the Tasmota firmware now. And in the configuration section, under configure module, we need to keep an eye on these. GPIO 0 is LED 1, that's the red LED. GPIO 2 is the blue LED, GPIO 13 is the button, and GPIO 15 is the relay. So now we're ready to go ahead and make our ESP Home sketch. Okay, so here's our ESP Home sketch. Most of this will look fairly familiar. There may be the odd bit I've got here that you're not seen before. So 
I'm using substitution, so the device name is the 3D printer PSU and the friendly name the same. IP address, I like to assign mine manually, you don't have to if you don't want, it's your choice. Then this bit, I don't know if you'll have seen this before, this is reboot time, zero seconds. And you'll see in a bit that I use this both in the Wi-Fi and in the API section. If we come over to the ESB home documentation and the Wi-Fi component, and the same is true in the API component, if we come down to the configuration variables, down here under reboot timeout, we will see that it says the amount of time to wait before rebooting when no Wi-Fi connection exists can be disabled by setting to zero seconds, but note that the low level IP stack currently seems to have issues with Wi-Fi where a full reboot is required to get the interface back working. Defaults to five minutes. Now the result of this that I've found from my other devices that run ESP Home is that if either the Wi-Fi is lost or access to Home Assistant's API is lost, then after five minutes, the device restarts as controlled by the default five minutes there. The problem is that in doing so, it power cycles the relay. Now, if it's my light and the light just flashes off and back on again, it's not a problem. But if it's running my 3D printer and I'm in the middle of a print and it loses the Wi-Fi connection, I don't want it to turn off the printer. So that is why I've put in a reboot time of zero seconds to disable this. So moving on, I've set up the ESP home device type as normal. The Wi-Fi is my SSID and password. And in here, I've added this reboot timeout variable. I've got my manual IP address, the logger running and the home assistant API. And again, I've got the reboot timeout in there. I've got OTA for the updates, the standard web server. And then I've got the sensors that I always like to include, the Wi-Fi signal, the uptime, and the status. Then we're setting up GPIO 13 as the input pull-up called the button. And then I've used a normal on click for a minimum of 50 milliseconds and a maximum of one second to toggle the relay. But I've also got an extra one where if you press the button for more than four seconds and less than 10 seconds, then we turn on a switch called reboot. So this will allow me to press the button on the plug to reboot the device if I've lost the Wi-Fi and I can't regain control of it. Rather than having to unplug it, I can just press and hold the button. So. The reboot switch is simply a restart platform switch and that's what's controlled by that long press on the button. Then I've got the switch on GPIO 12, that's the relay, and when it's turned on, it's going to turn on the red LED as well. When it turns off, it's going to turn off the red LED. I've then got the red LED defined there on GPIO not exactly the same as it was in Tasmoto. Then I'm using the blue LED as ESP Home's status LED. So I've got the status LED there on GPIO 2. So that should be good. We can Validate that. And all is well. Okay, there's one more thing I like to do because I use more than one of these plugs. I'm going to go back and edit this sketch once more. And this time I'm going to cut all of this out of here. And leave this one without. This can then be the main code for our devices and then for each individual device we only need the section with the substitutions in so we can save that and close it and then you can see up at the top here that I've made a new one called 3d printer PSU and if we edit this one you can see what we've got here 
is just the substitution section and then include IAT313 plug YAML and that tells it effectively to take the entirety of that file and continue it in here. So we can now do everything from here unless we need to make any changes to the main code. So we can validate from here and all is well. Okay, we can now compile our sketch and then select download binary. Once that's downloaded, we can go back to the TASMOTA interface that's running on the device, click firmware upgrade, choose the file that we've just downloaded and tell it to start the upgrade. It'll upload the file to the device, flash it and then reboot. There we go, upload successful. Back to ESP Home, we can see the green light says it's online, and we can bring up the web server. We can see all the states are there, and we can press the toggle switch to toggle the socket. Over to Home Assistant, we can go to Integrations, add a new integration, ESP Home, and choose the IP address. Yours might have been discovered if you're running Discovery. Once it's found, we can choose to add it to an area, I'm not going to. Press finish and we can see that it's brought in all the sensors that we'd added. So, there's the main switch that turns on and off the relay. That's working fine. If we can look down the lift, from the bottom we've got the Wi-Fi signal there. Here we've got the uptime. The status of the device, we can see it's connected. And this is the button on the device. So if I press the button, we can see it flash in there. Okay, so that all seems to be working well now in Home Assistant. Okay guys, that's it. That's my smart plug from IAT, running ESP Home and integrated with Home Assistant. I'm pretty happy with it. It seems to be running just fine. Next time, I'm going to show you how I've set up some extra controls for my 3D printer in Home Assistant, including shutting down Octoprint before the power goes off, so that we get a graceful shutdown and hopefully we don't damage the SD card anymore. See you again next time. If you liked this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you again soon.